there's um, quite a, a long, I guess, a long history, even in the last 30 years, of, of people doing constructed photography and photography that looks at, um, I guess, identity. And I'm thinking of, you know, Anza Halker mm -hmm. and, and others, um, Rose Farrell and George Park. And mm -hmm. it seems to me that that Rex Butler makes a very good point about your photographs in the sense that a lot of work is discussed in terms of posing or identity, whereas in fact we all perhaps love to pose and we all perhaps love to perform at times. It's kind of an extra to our mm -hmm. personality. Mm -hmm. And when one reads about your work, you get the sense that Olympia really loves this mm -hmm. performing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we all do because the, the minute we wake up and think about what we're going to wear that day, it's about dressing up and where am I going to go? Who am I going to meet? What do I need to wear? Well, so I, I think it's ingrained. What is and the context? How do we fit into e today? Exactly. And I think we're all guilty of <laughs> doing it. So I think Olympia is just uh, doing probably what all children do. And what we do as adults, although we don't talk about it, we do dress up in the same way that children do. I mean, they love to dress up and, and put on um, mum's clothes, if, if the little girls put on mum's clothes. Yeah. But I think we do that too. We, we think about colour and we think about uh, what to wear every day. Well, I think most of us do. Yeah, and we, we choose to belong to a tribe and we dress according to the rules of that tribe. Indeed, and, and this is why some people like to wear designer clothes and especially with the labels, uh, the logos printed on the clothes because they like to belong to that tribe or um, possibly they feel that um, their status um, is perceived differently according to the clothes that they wear. And you looked mm. at you looked at that very issue in a whole a whole body of work. I did. Um, set, setting people wearing Prada or Polo branded mm. uh, shirts alongside of quite classical and, and royal images, which is to make the point that I think the um, fashion designers are the new royalty today that traditional forms of royalty are perhaps no longer relevant in our society that is based on well most people are driven by uh, material concerns and I just wanted to make the point about consumption and identity. I mean you've combined a couple of roles uh, by you know you're a mother and you're an artist mm -hmm. and you've kind of come to your work is often, you know, by and large includes your daughter. So you've combined in, in one very practical sense, um, being a mother and having to parent mm. uh, and being an artist. And you've kind of, sometimes uh, parents feel that their, their world is entirely situated around children rather than adults. But you've actually managed to make an adult an adult life through being a mother on a daily basis and making the work. Yes, um, but I've also been very interested in documenting who they are and what they do. And I know a lot of my work has been constructed around ideas and the children have acted in my work. So it's not pure documentary in the sense that I'm documenting their lives. But I couldn't imagine, I've always been interested in making work about childhood and even before I had my own children I photographed other people's children but I can't imagine using models for my work for example I like to have a relationship with the people that I photograph and and also I think you, they're more likely to disagree with what I want to do uh, a model uh, for example wouldn't if I said I'd like you to do this they, they would do it because they're being paid right. and and they're used to following instructions. And it's actually really wonderful working with my children because they do say, no, that idea stinks. Can we do it my way? And um, often their way is so much better. So it's really good to collaborate with them. There must be a kind of 
a crossover in a sense, or, or, or I'm, I'm kind of curious, I guess, about the relationship between your childhood memories and Olympia's childhood and how they kind of intertwine, because some of the work comes from your childhood, doesn't it? Well, I guess when you, when you go back to the first body of work that I made, uh, Elvis, Immortal, and then the drag queens and the bodybuilders, it was all based on notions of identity and dress-ups. And growing up um, as a Greek in the 1960s, when um, I, I feel that uh, Europeans weren't as assimilated into Australian culture as they are now, you know, for 40 years later, I didn't know where I belonged. And I was searching for an identity. I even had a name that I felt very embarrassed about. So my name was anglicised to Pauline when I was at school, so I, was, I just never knew where I fit in, whether I was Greek or Australian. So I was always interested in the question of who we are, and I, I think that has informed my work. And I, I don't think that I experienced a childhood, possibly in the same way that my Australian counterparts did, because my parents both worked, and I was responsible for looking after my younger sister and brother. So from about the age of five, I worked. I was expected to clean the house and to cook and to shop, and I had a lot of responsibility. And in a sense, when I had my own children, I just wanted to experience that, that freedom that children have. I mean, I did have the freedom to do what I wanted to, and I think children don't necessarily have that today, even though I was expected to do so much around the house. Once I had done that, I could escape. I could just wander off into the streets for hours on end. I, I didn't have to do anything. There wasn't any pressure on me to do anything other than help my mum and dad around the house. So when Olympia was born and we started playing together, I wanted to document that. And for example, with the Lewis Carroll work and Wonderland, the first time that I read Alice in Wonderland was to Olympia. I didn't read it as a child. Well, I knew who I was when I woke up this morning, but I must have changed several times since then. Who are you? I'm Alice, at least I think I am. I didn't grow up in a household full of books or art or anything like that, you know. Uh, it was. Uh, I lived in working class Port Melbourne. My parents worked in factories. I had traditional migrant experience, even though I was born here. So I was very interested to observe how children play. And when reading Alice in Wonderland to Olympia, I just thought, wow, you know, I didn't come to this as a child. I didn't experience this as a child. So I was uh, overwhelmed by it. But that's not to say that Olympia, I'm just restaging my childhood no. or just wanting to experience what I feel I missed out on through her because I don't feel as if I actually missed out. I think today uh, children live such restricted lives and I, I think that possibly even though I, I didn't have the books and the toys and the clothes that she has, I experienced more freedom than she does today. Mm.